it, it can happen. A couple backfields to talk about the Bucks and the Bengals. And we have injured running backs at the top and then upside running backs backing them up. Let's start with the Bucks first. Uh, Rashad White uh, is doubtful to play this week, dealing with the injury. It's kind of been hampering him over the last couple of weeks. It's been an interesting case because we knew Bucky Irving was like starting to chomp at the bit, starting to take a little bit of workload away. But to, to I think a lot of people's surprise, it hasn't just been like Bucky Irving takes over or like Bucky Irving mm -hmm. is commanding all of the snaps. It's like the team still really trusts Rashad White. They've come out and backed him up saying it's going to be a split. Both of these guys are going to be useful. Well, now Rashad White is out. We were we had this dilemma a couple weeks ago, and now he's out. So Bucky Irving is going to get his full opportunity against the Saints defense to show what he's made of starting caliber wise. I think he plays well. And I think this is an opportunity for him to kind of take over this lead role or at least make it more 50-50 than the 60-40, 65-35 that it has been. I think Bucky Irving this week is an RB2. Are you there? Yeah, I would agree. I think that OC a decent amount of work and he'll be on um, the, the one area where uh Rashad White's definitely holding on to is the the receiving down work like he's been and I think this week we'll we'll see Bucky Irving in that role um he's looked good as a pure runner in my opinion he's looked much better than Rashad White has Rashad White had a decent week last week though which was encouraging um but it it, it also is a tough matchup against New Orleans Saints um I, but I look at this game and just the way that this Tampa Bay offense has really been playing for the whole season. Uh, I, I want to say outside of one week uh, against Denver, they had a big stinker, but outside of Denver, like this offense has been very good this year. Um, so for me personally, I, I think that Bucky Irving's an RB two. I think he'll see a, a, a good amount of volume. He'll definitely see the goal line work as well. He's already been kind of seeing the goal line work, even with Rashad white there. So he'll see the goal line work. So I think he's a really good play this week. If Rashad, even if Rashad White's out, I think he's a decent play. So like when not, you, start looking around, you start looking around, like because I think Bucky Irving is going to be one of those players where you have other capable options and you're thinking like, do I start? Do I trust him or do I not? If you have Bucky Irving and maybe you were looking at like Brian Robinson, are you playing Bucky Irving over Brian Robinson Jr.? I probably would this week just because Brian Robinson is a game time decision. And yeah, we saw it last week. He wasn't as involved as he usually is because he, he just seems banged up. So yeah, I would go with Bucky Irving. What about dealing with like a Trey Sermon? You going with Bucky Irving or Trey Sermon? I would go with Bucky Irving. I, yeah, I would I say like Bucky Irving would honestly be up there. I go with Joe Mixon and he'd be kind of behind there. So for me personally, he'd be like RB 18 range. And that's ahead of like Travis Etienne. I would honestly play him over Travis Etienne. But Ooh, I got Etienne. I, I think it's a plus matchup for Etienne. I got Etienne probably higher than you do this week. I got him in the top twelve. Yeah. Um, what about what about a guy like Rico Dowdle? You know, you playing because I think Rico Dowdle's earned the trust. It's a tough matchup for Rico Dowdle going yeah. up against the Lions. It's like do I play Rico or I think Bucky just provides a little bit more upside than like yeah. Rico does. I like if if Rico Dowdle didn't have the Lions, honestly, I probably would go with Rico because I think Rico is definitely trending up with his his snaps and workload, but with that, that's a brutal matchup. And I would just, yeah. I would go with Bucky though. Know. So a couple options there, obviously like, and you know, it's tough because you view starters, like he's got to be in the top 24 just for the fact that he's going to have a starter's yeah. workload, like has to be, but then you start getting some of these other like backfields where it's a little more convoluted. One of them we've talked about plenty, the Bengals backfield, um, Zach Moss and Chase Brown. And so, this is another one, and I think this one's actually more difficult than the Bucks because Zach Moss is playing. He mm -hmm. is banged up, and this was thought to be a high ankle or something that could keep him out for a while. It's not. It's a mild high ankle sprain. He's going to play. But we also saw the effectiveness of Chase Brown over the last couple of weeks. So now it pours a wrench into stuff. Like, is this workload going to be split? Is he going to re-injure uh, re or aggravate his injury? And I think there's a lot of question marks with Zach Moss when typically it's been like, we know he's the lead guy. We know Chase Moss, Chase Brown is the change of pace back. I still think this week I'd rather start, even though Zach Moss is playing, I've gotten to the point where I think I would still start Chase Brown over Zach Moss this week, just given the upside. Yeah, I agree with that. I, if I'm surprised, honestly, that Zach Moss is playing, I thought for sure he'd be out. So I'm a little shocked and, I didn't think he was going to play. So when I did my rankings, I had Chase Brown as a, uh, as my RB 16, I really liked him a lot this week and that might've even been too low. Um, uh, but I, for me personally, it would, he would get to the range where 
Um, Brian Robinson is right now. Currently, like I have Brian Robinson as RB22 this week. Yeah. So I would put Chase Brown around that range because honestly, I'd rather just take the upside chance with Chase Brown compared to like Rico Dowdle. Um, so for me personally, like he'd be right around there. And Zach Moss, I still it is it's interesting just because Zach Moss has honestly dominated the specifically the receiving down work is where he's really dominated. But uh we'll we'll see maybe with him being a bit banged up, maybe he seeds a little bit more work to uh um chase brown this week but i would still have him in some of my top 30 uh zach moss that is but yeah I, I like i would rather play chase brown over zach moss this week yeah i have chase brown a few spots higher than zach moss zach moss is like right on the outskirt of my top 30 as well and i'm probably moving down because i have i have ray davis still a little bit further down so i think i put ray davis yeah. over him but it's one of those situations where like if you have Zach Moss, it's a tough start over some of these other backs because there's the high injury risk. And there's the fact that like they're playing a Giants defense that actually has been playing pretty well as of late as well. So, you know, when I when I look at Zach Moss, I'm like, do I start him or Alexander Madison? Right. Alexander Madison in a tough matchup against the Steelers. And I almost rather start Madison because I know the guaranteed workload is there. Well, Zamir White did return to practice, but it's mm -hmm. assumed that Alexander Madison is going to take the workload. So it, that's a tough one for me. I think Alexander Madison provides a little bit more upside in the passing game, situational like that. So I think when it comes to Zach Moss, you have to either have no other option or you have to have a really strong team around Zach Moss to consider starting him because he, he's a touchdown or bus option. No, I would agree with that. Yeah. What about, and you said Chase Brown. So are you taking Chase Brown over? You said ETN was a little lower. You starting Chase Brown over Travis ETN? No, I would start ETN over Chase Brown. I got ETN over Chase Brown. Are you starting Chase Brown or DeAndre Swift? Uh, DeAndre Swift. Still going DeAndre Swift as well. Are you starting Chase Brown or J.K. Dobbins? I have J.K. higher. I got J.K. higher as well. Are you starting uh, Chase Brown or Javante Williams? Um. That's right where he would be. So if, if I had to pick one, I would go with Chase Brown, but Chase it, Brown. that's really close. I got Javante right ahead of him, and I agree it's close. You got Chase Brown, or are you starting Rico Dabble? I would go Chase Brown just because Chase Brown too. the upside. There. Chase Brown or Najee Harris? I'm not trusting Najee. I, like, I just don't see yeah. how you it's can, bad. man. Like, it's been two good match, and he hasn't done anything, and it's just – I don't know. Yeah. It's a tough one, bro. That's that's one of the harder calls right now. That Najee Harris thing. It's like because you, like I'm seeing to work matchups. Yeah, it, it, he's seeing work and he's it's good matchups, but he literally can't do anything with it. So it's, I, I'm glad. Hopefully, Jalen Warren plays this week, and I hope that they're not rushing him back because Najee hasn't done a whole lot. They're like, man, we really need to get something going here. And then you know, next thing you know, Jalen Warren's out again, and he goes on IR. So. I, I think thought, like Justin Fields open things up for him. Like normally yeah. rushing quarterbacks open lanes well, up and it feels like he's still listen, dead. man. When he was out there um, in that Indianapolis Colts game, Cordell Patterson looked better than Najee. And I'm yeah. sorry. Like I, I like Najee. I'm a Steelers fan, but Najee just is, he doesn't have that juice. Uh, Najee's like, a try hard. He is a tryhard. He's like David Pierce. <laughs> Honestly, he really is. He and then is, sometimes bro. he's not even a tryhard. He's like back there trying to juke. And it's like, bro, yeah. fucking lower that shoulder. Get going north and south, baby. Like, let's go. So I hate I to think, say it, but it's fucking true, bro. It is. <laughs> Honestly, on that note, too, I think that Jalen Warren kind of becomes like it. No, we're not talking, but I think he's kind of like this little bit of a buy low because I do think be. there's a real chance he's the guy that they prefer in this backfield. If Najee's not getting anything going, like a, how, how long can you honestly wait and continue to give him touches? If nothing's happening, like you got to get something going on the ground here. So Jalen Warren's a little interesting and I don't think he would cost that much either. No, I think you can get him for the low right now. The only thing I've is, seen him dropped. It, yeah. If you would have got him last week, you probably would have got a better price tag. on Yeah. Him. Agreed. So I think people are starting to sense that like, Oh shit, Najee's not playing well. Like there's a chance Jalen Warren, can take over and we know he gets the passing game work all we would need to see is like a 50 50 split and he's on the flex radar most weeks yeah. maybe even rb3 